Max here, and just really quick, I wanted to do a 300 sub special by showing you guys how to put an icon in the Cinema 4D. This is one of my most asked questions, so I decided why not make a tutorial on it. Uh, I hope to make a few more tutorials in the future on Cinema 4D and Geometry Dash, but for now we'll just stick to some simple stuff. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the icon in Photoshop, and get your magic wand tool, and select all of the black lines. Alright, once you have that done, go to your eraser, and then erase all of the black lines. Gotta also get the eye here too. Now your icon doesn't actually need to be colored, but it makes it a lot easier if it is. Okay, so now that we have all that done, we are going to once again grab the magic wand tool, and we are going to select all of the pieces that would use the primary color. Now it seems to just be all of these ones. Once we get that, we're going to want to select the Paths tab. But if you don't have that, you can go to Window, and then tab should, the tab for Paths should show up. So once you have the Paths tab selected, go down here to the list and click Make Work Path. Set the tolerance to 0.5, and then click OK. Once you have that done, it should look something like this. All right, now. Hold on. Let me go up here into File. One sec, got some. All right, you go to File, Export, Paths to Illustrator. Click OK. Once it loads, you can choose where you want to save it. I'm going to name this as Rob Buck Icon Part 1. It should save as an Adobe Illustrator file and then click Save. Once you're done with that, do the exact same process. Make sure to delete this path, except this time you're going to want to select all of the pieces that will use the secondary color, which in this case is yellow. Whoops. So there we go, we got all these selected, and then again go to Paths, Make Work Path, Tolerance at 0.5, click OK, File, Export, Paths to Illustrator, Work Path, Rob Buck Icon, and I'm going to name this Part 2, save it to the desktop, and that's pretty much it that for uh, Photoshop. Then we're going to open up Cinema 4D, once again go into File, and then once you have your project open, like whatever intro you want to make, you want to go to Merge. And from Merge, you're going to want to go to your desktop and find the icon. So let's go Rob Buck Icon Part 1. Open this. Click OK. Now once it loads here, there it is. All right. So you now we got all of this. Then we're going to go to File once again, Merge, Desktop. Rob Icon Part 2. I'm going to click Open. OK. And boom, there we go. We have splines. All right, that's the first part. So then you should open it up, and there should be a ton of paths here. All right. All right. So all you're going to have to do is put an extrude NURBS on each one of the individual paths. So this is actually going to take quite a while, so I'm going to pause the recording right about here. All right. So once you've done all of this stuff, all you really got all I've really been doing is taking the path, putting it under an extrude NURBS, and then putting it back into the null object. So I already did this for the first one, which had a lot more paths, and now you just saw me do it for the second. All right. So what you're gonna do now is hold Shift and click on both of them so that they're both highlighted in yellow. Right click, click Group Objects, click it again, click Enter, so you can rename it. I'm going to name it Rob Buck, because this is his icon. And what I'm going to do here is it, go to the coordinates tab and set the Z to 4. That actually looks about right. All right, cool. So now you have this 3D icon in Cinema 4D. And then you can go and find whatever you know mats and stuff you want. Uh, I'm going to use Moonman HDRI. Make sure to have a Lightroom on, because that makes it look a lot better. And then 
I'll go. I like the sparkly ones the most, so I'll go with silver and yellow. And all I'm going to do is figure out which one uses the primary color, which I think is this one. And then I'm going to put it onto this one as well. So my computer is lagging a lot right now. So up oh, there we go. All right. And also make sure to select both of these and go to cubic and seamless. That makes the math look a lot better. And we gotta wait for it to load again. There we go. Alright. Now, just to make it look a little bit better, I'm gonna open up this yellow and quickly check the glow tab. I'm not gonna fiddle with the settings too much. But I'm gonna let it load again. It should only take a few more seconds. Alright, yellow's loaded, and the silver, I think, is loaded. So all we gotta do is render it out real quick, see how it looks. Alright, that looks really nice. That's pretty much it. Now, if you want to animate it, all you gotta do is set it to wherever you want it to be. Here, where, where is it? Okay. So let's start it right here. Move it over. Then it, over the course of about two seconds, it should move about this far. It's really simple animation. All right, and there you have it. That's how you put a 3D icon into Cinema 4D. Uh, let me know if there's any more tutorials that you guys want me to do. I'm not going to be doing anything super complicated, but if there's anything really quick and simple, uh, I'll definitely be sure to check it out. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm hopefully going to turn this into some sort of a mini-series. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.